now that our spacing shim has been installed, again, that very small one right there in the very center, next we can install our mid-valve piston. This piston is directional, and you can see the relief cut here in the center. So that is gonna be the side that goes down. This bleed hole is gonna be the side that goes up. So, again, bleed hole on top, relief cut in the center, the side that goes down, because that relief cut right here is going to be what interfaces with that center shim and collar post. Awesome, so all the shims are on straight. None of these are offset to the side or anything. So we can put this on. And if we do it right, we'll see that the shims will compress a little bit as we push down. That is our shim preload and that's what we want. Cool. Next step is to install their rebound shim stack right here. Let's see if we can do this one handed and not make a mess. Ooh, so far so good. Oh, maybe not. Ooh, success. Usually I have somebody helping me film, uh, but lately I have not uh, been able to get anybody. Awesome. So now we have all that on there. Again, I provided you with all these shims. So now we're going to reuse the nut in the original spacer that we took off. Now this spacer has a few shims underneath it as well. And depending on your setup, we may use all of them or we may only use some depending on the exact height your build came out to. The main thing we want to achieve is just to have the proper amount of threads left over. So that way when we install our nut and tighten down, everything tightened down correctly. I'll show you what I mean. So let's grab this. We'll use all the shims that were already there. Slide it onto the top. Awesome. So as you can see, that's too much spacing. If we compare the length of thread that we have to our nut, our nut would not utilize all of the threads. So let's pull the spacer back off. And then let's remove a few of the shims. Let's take out, mm, I think three would be a good number. And then let's reinstall this and see where it shakes out to be. That is looking to be perfect. Let's double check it. Let's grab our nut here. Compare the length of thread to the nut. Mm, we're almost right there. But you know what? I think let's take out one more shim and then that will be perfect. So let's pull this off. Here we go, let's take off one more shim. So on this exact build, we're only reusing one of the shims from the original stack, or let's say original parts. Awesome, push down, double check. Oh, let me move my fingers. Mm, you know what? One more shim. <laughs> We're close, but I believe you guys get the idea of what we are achieving. Again, the main thing is just spacing. We want to utilize every single thread on this post and every single thread on our nut. Now that is looking perfect. So we've cleaned off the threads here. We've cleaned out the threads on our nut. The next thing we're going to do is utilize some red Loctite. We're gonna put a little bit of Loctite on these threads here and a little bit on the inside of our nut. And then we're going to torque it down. All right, we are complete with installing the JBI suspension mid valve component assembly. We torqued our nut to 40 inch pounds. To do that, I used a quarter inch drive torque wrench and I set it to 40 inch pounds. Again, 40 inch pounds, not foot pounds. There's a very big difference between the two. But again, 40 inch pounds with red Loctite on the threads. Perfect. 
Now the last thing I'm going to do is install the white piston band that we removed from the OEM piston. As you will see, there was already an O-ring installed and there will be an O-ring already installed on your JBI suspension mid-valve piston. So I'm gonna to attempt to do this one-handed here. These are called a Z-cut band. As you can see, it kind of makes the letter Z. And you know what? I'm not going to try this one-handed. I'm going to put this on with two hands and come back. All right, so much easier to install this with two hands. As you can see, the piston band has been installed completely around the piston. None of the band is protruding. Uh, what I mean by that is you want to watch this corner and this whoop, this bottom corner and make sure it's not protruding past the piston because we don't want it to get pulled or popped out of place when we install this back into the cartridge cylinder. This piece right here. So let's take one last look at our JBI suspension mid-valve assembly. We've got our spacer, our leaf spring shim assembly, the shims for the piston, our mid-valve piston, our rebound shims, the original spacer that came off of the mid-valve assembly, and the original nut that came off the mid-valve assembly. And again, we torqued it to 40 inch pounds and we utilized red Loctite on the threads. The next step is going to be reinstalling this back inside the cartridge cylinder. I have these two component assemblies prepared to be reinstalled with each other. What I'm going to do is put a very small film of grease on this white piston band all the way around the piston. Again, a light film of grease, you don't need a lot. And then also make sure that you did a very good job cleaning out the threads on the inside of the cylinder. We don't want any loose pieces of Loctite because if there is, they might get pulled in to the cartridge cylinder when we are reinstalling this mid piston assembly. Now I'm gonna have to turn the phone off to do this one handed, but just to give you a demo, Again, we're gonna put a fine, thin film of grease on our white piston band, and then that's going to install into here. The mid-valve cartridge rod assembly has been reinstalled into the cartridge cylinder. After I installed it back into there, I then reinstalled the clamps and mounted it into our vise. The reason I did that is you do not want to mount this cartridge and clamp it and then, to in, and then try to install the mid piston because the cartridge is going to be squeezed and it's going to be very hard, if not impossible, to get the piston to slide past it. So again, I installed our cartridge rod assembly into our cylinder. The mid piston is about in this region down here, so we are not clamping it right now. And then next, we're going to apply some red Loctite onto these threads. And then we're gonna re-tighten this down. I do not have an exact torque on this, so you're gonna have to trust your hands, but it is tight. But man, don't get very carried away. The red Loctite is gonna do a great job securing this and making sure it doesn't come loose. This is aluminum, we have aluminum threads. It is a big thread diameter, so you can still apply a good amount of torque, but don't be trying to break the damn thing. Be reasonable. The cartridge seal head assembly has been reinstalled and torqued down to our cartridge cylinder. As you can see, we now have our oil lock ring, this black piece, back down. Previously, we had a uh, rubber band up here, so it's just out of the way. So now that we have that back in place, we're going to utilize the snap ring that holds it in place. Come around up top. And let's see if I can do this one-handed. Maybe not. So what I like to do is I want to put one of the one of the ends of the snap ring right by the flat corner, and we'll put the other end there as well. Let's see if we can do this one-handed. Mm, awesome. Oh, we got some red glove though. There we go. So the reason I like to do that is. The end of the snap ring comes right here on this side, 
and the end of the snap ring comes right here on this side. So that way the snap ring is getting full engagement all the way around here and is getting full engagement oh, all the way around on this side on the circlip groove. And that'll prevent our oil lock ring from coming out of place. The next step will be unfixturing our cartridge, turning it right side up, filling it up with oil, bleeding out the air, and then reinstalling our compression assembly. The damping cartridge cylinder has been fixtured right side up and is now time to pour oil inside of it. Before we do so, ensure that you have the cartridge rod fully extended. And I'm going to ask that you pour in 385 cc's of a five weight fork oil. If you have the WP four weight fork oil on hand, you can also use that as well. It is very similar to a five weight. If you have questions why, you can email me and I'll help explain to you the ambiguity of suspension weight grades and how they're not always an apples to apples comparison. Anyway, with that damper rod fully extended, again, pour in 385 cc's of oil. Once you have, we want to spin and slowly move the rod up five to six inches at a time and then move it back down. This will get easier as you pump the oil and get air out of it. After you spend five to 10 minutes doing this, you'll get very little air bubbles coming up the top. If you continue to get lots of air bubbles, what that means is the cartridge cylinder seal down here is leaking and likely maybe got too hot during the end, during the removal part. So once you have all the air bled out, it would be now time to install our JBI suspension modified compression assembly. Now for this video, I just have a stock one. It is not modified, but I'm just doing this for reference. So with our assembly, what we wanna do is push our cartridge rod all the way up like so. And what that's going to do is going to push the oil up in here very close to the bleed port that's located. Let's find that bad boy. There it is, that hole, very close to that hole inside of that cylinder. The oil will be just below that. So with that like that, this is ready to install. I like to put some grease on the threads here and a little bit of grease on the free piston seal, that's the black seal, and a little bit of grease on the green O-ring. By a little bit, I mean a small film. Don't do a ton to contaminate the oil. We just do this so that way it's easier to install and also nicer on the threads as we thread this in because this pressure spring is, be, is going to be pushing up against our cap, fighting resistance. So let's help limit that friction between the threads of our cap and the threads of our cylinder. So again, with the cartridge rod pushed all the way up, we would then install this. And as we do push it down and install it, the cartridge rod is going to get pushed out and fully extend. And as this gets to about right here, it'll take a little bit more force, a fair amount to push it down that last little bit and to engage the threads. Now the last step of our bleeding process is to do the final purge, which you will get just a small, very tiny amount of oil volume out of. Reason being is when you poured in that 385 cc's of oil, that is nearly the exact amount that the cartridge needs. So it will not need to purge out much excess oil. Now, if you're good with your eyes and good on details, you notice that this is a different cartridge and we've been working on the video. This cap is black instead of the silver one. Um, this video is just to show you how to install it. I'm not actually building this for a cartridge for somebody. So I don't wanna go through all the steps of building it just to take it back apart. Um, here we have a cartridge already assembled with oil. So I'm gonna show you the final bleeding process. What that is, is with it fully assembled and fully extended, we're going to push this all the way down to the bottom until it stops. And as you can see, a little bit of oil is coming out this bleed hole. Now, a lot of oil is coming out of this one. 
This one wasn't built by us. But what you will get is something more like that, just a little small stream. And what that is, is that's purging out any excess oil. I like to hold this down for about a good minute. And after a minute has gone by, you can release up. And you can see that the cartridge rod will fully extend out all the way on its own. If your cartridge rod does not fully extend out all the way, then again, you have a leaky seal at the cartridge rod seal. Um, if your rod extends all the way, except maybe the last half inch, that likely is the bleeding procedure. You still have some air inside of the cartridge. So now that you have your cartridge all back together, it is time to reinstall back into your fork. I trust you know how to do that. And then please follow your JBI suspension settings guide on where to adjust your clickers at and how much oil volume to pour into the outer chamber of the forks and also how much air pressure to utilize on your JBI suspension WP AER Pro Fork kit. Thank you guys for watching this video. I appreciate the demand we've had on these JBI suspension Pro Fork kits. Um, the word got out pretty quickly over the years of um, how well they perform and especially at the reasonable cost they are. At Ride JBI, we've put a lot of testing, tuning, and development time into the WP AAR48 and WP Exact 48 forks um, since they came out in 2017 because I felt it was very important to offer our customers and riders a reasonably costed air fork setup that performs very well. Um, at Ride JBI, we also have very good settings for the WP Exact 6500 drop in, which is a spring conversion and also for the KYB SSS spring conversion. However, keep in mind, those sell for about $2,000, where our DIY kits sell for $295, so quite a bit cheaper. Any questions or comments, man, please leave below or give us a call or send me an email.